soft, delicious anginetti all'anice, anise anginette cookies. Stay tuned for the recipe. Everybody, this is Alessandra. Welcome to my home. Welcome to my kitchen. Today we're going to be making together nut cookies, anise flavor, which is one of my favorite flavors. They're also known as anginetti. This is a wonderful base recipe that you could use for many different flavors. Uh, a lot of times I add citrus, lemon, orange, even mandarin or mandarin, one of my favorite um, citrus fruits. Uh, so let me get started. The ingredients here very simple. I'm sure you have everything at home already. And if you don't, go get yourself some sambuca. Here we go. It is, we have three eggs. Half a cup of sugar, we have three cups of flour, um, quarter teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of anise extract, I have three teaspoons of baking soda, and I have two tablespoons of the sambuca. And right here you could, I have half a cup of sunflower oil, you could also use a light olive oil. Don't use an olive oil, it's too strong. An extra virgin olive oil, too strong in flavor. And right here for the glaze, uh, I have three cups of powdered sugar, confectioner sugar, 10 times sugar, different names for it, and some milk to make the glaze. In a large bowl, combine the three eggs and sugar. This is really not necessary to use a stand-up mixer, it's just easy to do it. Uh, with an handheld, or even you can use a whisk, okay? Mix it for a few minutes until all the sugar is dissolved. Slowly incorporate the oil, a filo, just a drop at a time. It's nice and slow, and continue whipping. Let's get the sambuca in. Now, if you were making them vanilla, what you could do, you could put in two tablespoons of milk. If you were making lemon cookies, you would put two uh, tablespoons of lemon juice, fresh only. Same thing with the orange or same thing with the mandarino. If you're using um, anise oil, be careful because it's very strong, just a few drops, but I'm using the extract. Going to set aside the wet ingredients. And what we're going to do is mix the flour, the salt, and the baking powder. Let's go ahead and sift in the dry ingredients, just like this. See all the little bowls that are on top? Just use your hands and dissolve them and get all the flour in. Now I'm going to incorporate the ingredients with a spatula. Just stir and you'll see that slowly the wet ingredients are going to absorb the dry or vice versa I guess. See? The, the measurements when they're precise you'll see that you should have a soft dough, but not sticky where you cannot work it. Okay. okay, now we're going to place it in a saran wrap, in a plastic wrap, and we're going to let it rest in the fridge for about 30 minutes. Let's wrap it up nicely. There it goes, like this. See that? Okay. In the fridge it goes. Okay. Go out of the fridge. And what we're going to do is, let's cut it in four. So like this, we keep some sort of order uh, on the sides. Okay. Try to make equal pieces. Let me move this out of the way so you could see. If a little bit sticks on the work counter, don't worry. The great thing about the store that you do not need any additional flour. Um, again, if the measurements are exact, it's just perfect. No extra flour needed. Take a look at that. 
You can even make this doll just for the kids to play with. Actually, this is a great recipe to work with children. I'm going to cut it in half. What we basically want, we want little six inch logs, okay? About the size of your index. Uh, I would say less than one inch. One inch is too thick. And about six inches long, what you're going to do is I need you to come closer because this is a tricky part, okay? So you're gonna make a knot. So you're gonna twist it, and then you're gonna take this end and put it through the hole right there. There we go, so like this. Ecco qua, primo nodo. Okay, six inches, twist it underneath it, help yourself with this hand, and just get the piece through. And there goes another knot. Also, if the doll, look at this, it's so forgiving. Perfect. See that? Just mix it up together. And who knew that playing with day, <laughs> play doll would make us all bakers? I love it. In Italian, play doh is plastichina. That's what, uh, but just that word brings back a lot of memories. Okay, there it goes again. <laughs> Twist under, help yourself, and push it through. Oven on 350, 22 cookies. You get between 22 and 24, depending on the size. Se hai la mano più grande o più piccola, depending on the size of your hand, if you roll more or less. I'll check back in a little bit. For sugar, I'm just gonna add a drop of the extract very little you could add also a little bit of sambuca it's up to you or you can leave it out completely because the cookies are uh, nice and flavorful now what you want to do is add a little bit of the milk at a time because if you add too much milk uh, and then there's little uh, groomy little bowls of the sugar it's going to be very hard to dissolve them so start slowly and like this create a well and pick up from the side towards the middle. See this? Like this. As you see that it's too thick, you just keep adding a little bit of the milk. Again, not a lot. You need um, more of the powdered sugar than the actual liquid. Now, if you were making lemon cookies, you would do this with fresh squeezed lemon or a fresh squeezed orange if you like okay let's continue on you see how nice and smooth with no lumps it's just perfect and look at the thickness fifteen minutes in the oven they're beautiful take a look they're just golden don't overcook them because they lose their softness now I want to show you a little trick. I'm going to move them over to a cooling rack. Don't move your parchment paper, so I'm just going to move my cooling rack right over here. And the reason why is as I dip, as I glaze the cookies, I place it over and you're not going to make a mess on your cooking rack. Just wrap up your parchment paper and throw it out. Using a little fork, what you do is you just Use a little fork to hold, or you could use a skewer, that works great too. Just dip the cookie right in the, take a look here, like this. See that? Dip the cookie like that, you see, look how gorgeous and white. Look how gorgeous and white that is. over like this get them all nice and coated drip off the excess okay now if you eat them like this it's not a very sweet cookie the reason why it doesn't take a lot of sugar is because you're adding all the sugar on the outside of the cookie troppo bellino very very cute okay Let's get them all done and be back. Okay. 
less cookie done, okay? Made a little bit of a mess, but they're beautiful. Before the glaze sets, but not immediately, because if the glaze is too wet, the sprinkles are gonna run. So you gotta give it just enough time where it's still shiny because it's wet, but not quite dry. Okay, here it goes. I'm going to be using beautiful spring, spring color sprinkles. We're all done. Let's open one up. They're delicious soft cookies. Uh, I know people do ask that all the time. What kind of cookie is it? Look at that. See that? Amazing. Now, please subscribe, hit the like button, hit the bell button. You can be notified when all the recipes are released. The sprinkles determine what time of the year you make these cookies. I'm using pastels today. Grazie, arrivederci, alla prossima. Ciao, ciao. Mmm, delicious.